I use Docker to run plenty of things in my home lab from Nextcloud, Home Assistant, dashboards, DDNS, legally obtained media organizers, and so much more. It's great, it's easy, and one of the reasons why I love Docker is because I'm a lazy piece of shit. One of the side effects of that though is that I have to manually check all of my containers to see if there is a new image actually disgusting, but not anymore. About a week ago, I installed something called Watchtower that runs right in my Docker instance and solves that exact problem. Watchtower checks for new images whenever I like and automatically updates the containers that I tell it to. It even sends me an email every time it does something. This is one of my favorite new containers, so I'm gonna walk through the Watchtower docs and show you my exact setup. So diving right into the Watchtower docs, You'll see that from the quick start menu, you can run it with a simple Docker command or use a Docker Compose YAML. And yeah, there's really not much to it. If you run these in this way, it'll essentially update all the containers in that Docker instance. And that's it. That's really all you have to do if you want the most basic setup. And the way it essentially works is that it's going to take all the images from those associated containers download them and compare them versus the ones that are already there. If there's a difference, it'll gracefully shut it down, delete the application and restart it with all the same parameters. Now in using it, there's different ways you can go about it. You can put everything into a config file or you can use environment variables. And if you're using public repos, that's the easiest. But if you're using a private one that requires you to log in, you can also do that and put it in your config file. You'll see that I'm not using this, so if you're going to do that, uh, just use their documentation. It's actually really good. So getting into the arguments, this is going to be the main bread and butter for if you're customizing this. And I'll walk through some of the ones I think are really cool and important, and then you'll see later how I'm actually using them. So first thing I want to touch on is how you actually tell Watchtower which containers you want to monitor. So you can do that in one of two ways. The first one being using labels. So here you can see there is a flag called Watchtower Label Enable. If this is set to true, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look for this exact label on the containers in your Docker instance. If this Watchtower Label Enable is set to true, then it's gonna look here and if this is set to true, it's gonna monitor it. If it's set to false, it's not gonna monitor it. It's that easy, but I'm not actually using that. I'm using this one here called filter by disabling specific container names. So what I'm doing here is using the environment variable watchtower disable containers. And how this works is that if you use this, you can just pass a comma separated or space separated string of the exact container names that you don't want to monitor. So I'm using this. I'll explain why in a bit, but these are the two ways you can tell watchtower which containers you want to monitor and which ones you don't. They even have a section in their docs called container selection that will go into more detail about how to use this. So go check that out. So one question you may have had, and it's one that I had as well, is that what happens with containers that depend on others? Well, Watchtower knows exactly what to do with those and will detect any links between containers. And if you want to set manual ones, you can do that too with labels. Now, of course, you don't want this thing going around updating your containers without you being notified. So there's a whole notification section. Now you can use webhooks and send this to Slack or Microsoft Teams or other third party applications, whatever you want, but I'm just using standard old email. So if we go down here, you'll see a typical email setup and it's not too crazy, just regular old SMTP. It'll send out these reports using this default template, but you can modify this if you want. So you essentially just put the whole string in an environment variable. Uh, here's one in the Docker run command, or if you have Docker compose, you can do it like this, but I just left it default because it works. Another cool thing they have is this HTTP API mode, which essentially just spins up an internal API and lets you hit that with a regular old curl command. This can be used in tandem with scheduling the updates. So you can have regular schedules and also have the option to manually do it. Another thing they have is this metric section, which is an experimental feature. And all this is doing is let you access metrics using whatever software you want. By default, they give you this little Prometheus setup that you can use with Grafana or whatever. I guess it tells you uh, what, how many scans it ran and how many containers it updated. 
which is cool, but I'm not using any of this in my setup. So I really don't have use for this. I can see a lot of people who use Grafana and log ingestion could use this, but um, I'm not. But yeah, there's a lot here and you can go through docs. Like I mentioned, they're really, really good, but let's take a look at what my actual setup looks like. So I run Portainer to handle all of my Docker orchestration. So I'm obviously going to be using Docker Compose. So let's go down and check out my Docker Compose file. So yeah, there's not much here outside of the environment variables. I mean, it's the basic image. We only pass the Docker socket uh, location so that it can talk with my Docker instance and the port that I want to open up because I'm using that HTTP API mode to where I can hit it manually. So I mentioned before that there's different ways to tell Watchtower which containers you want to monitor, and I'm using the Watchtower Disable Containers Environment Variable. You can see I've passed a bunch of uh, containers here that I don't want it to monitor. Pretty much all of them are the Nextcloud ones because Nextcloud AIO actually has its own version of Watchtower in here that's doing the same thing. So I don't want both of them fighting. So yeah, it'll do everything in my Docker instance except for these. And I like this because it doesn't require me to go in and change labels on existing containers. And I know that in the future, if I add a container later down the road, it by default will be picked up in this instance of Watchtower and I don't have to worry about it. The next thing is the schedule. So again, there's two ways to go about this. You can set this as the kind of cron syntax. And the one I have here basically says to run this every night at 1 a.m. Or you can use interval, which is a separate environment variable that will specify the amount of seconds you want to wait between runs if you want to do it that way. And if you're using commands inside Docker Compose or with a regular Docker CLI command, you can specify that here. And one thing I forgot to mention is that if you do it this way, you can actually specify a space separated string of your containers that you want it to monitor. So you can also do it that way. The next thing here is this Watchtower cleanup. And I have this set to true because if this is set to true, when Watchtower updates a container with a new image, it's gonna delete the old image. Now by default, this is false and it's not gonna prune all the old images. So if you leave this running for a long time with this off, you may run into storage issues with all of those old images building up. Now there is also an option to delete old anonymous volumes, but I don't have that set to true just in case there's something in there that I may need after the fact, then it'll still be there, but I probably will set this to true later on, but We'll see. Next is Watchtower notification. So here you can see I'm using email. This is obviously not my actual information because you guys are perverts. So it's pretty straightforward using the docs. You can set your from email, who you want it set to, your SMTP server, and then your user and password to log in, as well as the port. Then you can set the delay, which is the delay in seconds for when you want the email to be sent out. By default, it's two. I, I don't know why you'd set this to anything else, but if you want it to wait like a day, you can set that, I guess. And then you can set your host name. So by default, it'll just use like the Docker ID for the container. But uh, if you want it to actually use a name, specify that host name here. And I just have mine set to Docker HA. You'll see that when we take a look at the actual emails. Then you can specify the time zone. Obviously this makes sense because if you have it running on a specified time, you'll want that synced with your host. And if you wanna do it a different way where it actually reads the host configuration, you can do that as well. Watchtower no startup message set to true. By default, this is false, but I wanted this set to true because every time it starts, it will send out a notification if this isn't set to true. So I didn't want that because when I was testing this, Every time I was restarting it, it was sending me an email, but I may set this back to false, but it's it's true for now. That's, that's what it does. Now for the HTTP API stuff. So two things you'll need if you want this to run are a token, which you can set here, and then the update flag set to true. Once both of these are set, you will be able to access that HTTP API and run this manually. Now I mentioned before that you can run this on the schedule as well as manually with the API, but only if you have this Watchtower HTTP API periodic poll set to true. By default, this is false. And if that's the case, your API won't work or the schedule won't work. 
uh, one of them won't work. And then watchtower timeout is how long you want it to wait if there's an issue. And I did run into this once with the default 10 seconds, so I just bumped it up to 30. You guys know what a timeout is. But yeah, that's my setup. That is it. Like I mentioned before, there's a lot of environment variables and some other things you can do, but I just wanted to walk through what it looks like for an actual user to set this up because on the main page, obviously it can be set up with a single line command with no environment variables, but a lot of you may want to use some of these, so here's how I'm using them. Now we'll probably want to take a look at one of the example emails, so let's do that. So here you can see the first email I got was one that's saying, hey, someone ran the request manually using the API. Then right after that, I got the logs from the actual run. You can see I had quite a few containers that had images that needed updating and it handled it pretty well. It found new ones, stopped the old containers, and then it created the new ones. You can see up here that there was one issue with my sonar where it did time out, and that's what I mentioned, increasing that timeout from 10 seconds to 30. And then if we actually go down here, you can see it ran again on the schedule a couple minutes later, and it actually got that sonar image. So yeah, corrected itself. It looks like the actual timeout increase worked. So that's my setup. There really isn't much to it. It can certainly get more complex if you have multiple private repos and want to start ingesting metrics, but I don't need all that. It's so nice knowing that the containers I have pulling from the latest image tags will actually be the latest images and I don't have to do anything. I even get emails and it'll remove all of the old images to clean up storage space. The devs state that this is for home labs and smaller environments and that it's not for enterprise use, which makes sense. If you're in charge of a large fleet of production applications then you probably have a more thorough or commercial solution and that's totally fine. But yeah, I just wanted to share this little application with you guys in case you were in a situation like me, so I hoped it helped. If not, then I hope it was at least interesting. Surely it was if you're still here, so you may as well like the video. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that too. The button's right there. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my watchtower that's always watching me even when I sleep. Just kidding, I hope. Y'all are the jam, and if you're still watching, you're a Slack notification. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.